Greg Garcia, and I'm going to tie a Prince Nymph for this next fly. It's a beadhead Prince Nymph. Makes for a great little caddis pattern. Also, princes can be tied um, and represent a lot of different stoneflies as well. With the two split tails, um, I, that's what kind of gives it the distinction to make it a nice stonefly. I've, uh, I'm tying on a Tamco 5262. I've mounted a tungsten bead in about a three millimeter. I like tungsten on my flies just so that if I'm going to use a, a bead head pattern, I like for it to be heavy. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lead, add some lead to this. And for this size fly, it'll take about 12 wraps. And then this is such a soft material, I can just pull that and break it. Also, by using some lead behind this bead, what I'll do is center that bead Make it real stable there so it doesn't move around. Thread I'm going to use is some good old Dansville 6 aught, which happens to be also a 70 denier thread. Just going to run some wraps through the wire just to make that a little bit more secure. I'm going to bring a thread base right back down to the so right over the barb of the hook. Now we're going to use some goose biots for the tail and also for the wing. And when I'm looking for using this material, what I like to do is for the tails, I like to pull the biots off more towards the tip that makes for a very small base, nice little tail. And then in the white biot for the wing, I'm going to go down here more towards the base. And that's going to yield a little wider biot so that I have a little bit more material to attach to this fly. So I've grabbed two biots. These are brown. What you want to do is oppose those so that they are going in the opposite directions. Takes a little bit of finagling, but there we got them opposed to each other, so they're curving away from each other. And that the tips are nice and even there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this. I've determined the length of these. I want them to be about half the length of the body. Kind of place them at a little angle towards me. And I'm going to make one little soft wrap there. Two more wraps. But before I really tighten this down, I'm going to let go of those. Make sure that they are on top of my hook and the right length. And then at this point, grab a hold of those again. And I'm just going to wrap those biots right up to the base of my lead. I'm going to clip off these little butt sections. And at this point, I'm going to go right back down to those tails, hold on to them. Make sure that everything is tied in nicely and they're split. They're on top of the hook. 
And at this point, I want to kind of build in a little taper so that I'm going to cover up all of this lead and kind of make a nice gentle taper down to the tails. It's take me a moment to do this. Also when you're wrapping, if you have very little thread coming off your bobbin, you have a little bit more control where you want to place this. If I was wrapping this and I had my thread way out here and I'm making these huge big revolutions, it takes a lot of time. I'm not very precise on my wraps. and Things can get out of hand pretty quickly. Also, if you're tying copper johns, this would be the right technique to do that as well. Next thing I'm going to do is add in some Lagerton tinsel. I'm going to lay that in on my side of the hook. This is going to be my ribbing for this fly. Bring it right down to the tail again. And I can quickly bring it right back up. Another thing I want to mention here is that as I've been wrapping all my thread and materials in, I've been leaving a little gap here between my bead and all of these wraps. Just an ever slight wrap. That's going to help us here at the end of this fly. Then the next thing we're going to do is grab some strung peacock curl. Just going to grab about six, seven pieces. I'm not too worried about how many I've gotten. Even up those tips. Lay them straight on top of the hook. Do that little pinch wrap technique, make another wrap backwards, and then I can pull these out of that tie-in point. And then bring them right back down to the tail of the fly, and then bring my thread straight up. Another thing I'm going to do here is I haven't let go of this bundle, because that way I can just grab it in my other hand. At this point I'm just going to start wrapping forward. Also the first three wraps that I do I've kind of angled them at about a 45 degree angle. Then as I come up through the thorax I'm going to wrap backwards and that kind of helps with the natural taper here. And then I'm going to go right up to the bead of the hook. I don't want to leave too much of a gap here between the bead and the rest of the material. Then with this uh, Lagerton, I'm going to counter wrap through all this hurl. Counter wrap gives me a little bit more uh, security, kind of builds up, uh, keeps that hurl from coming apart. And I can clip that off. Now the next piece we're going to put in here is some um, hen hackle. I'm going to take a piece off of the and cape, just like we did on the dry flies. I'm going to stroke these fibers backwards, cut off that fluffy piece. Pull a few pieces off, lay that in at about a 45 degree angle, tie that in, make sure it's nice and tight. And then as you can see, I've left a little bit of a stem here. If 
I fold this stem back onto the hackle and I make a couple more wraps. It's going to really trap this in there. Hopefully when I make this next wrap that will not come undone. Grab the tip with my hackle pliers. Before I wrap this I'm going to just wet my fingers, stroke or fold all the fibers off that stem so they're all on one side. It's kind of a quick easy way to do that. Take a wrap, fold them, go right up to the beat. You can do two, three wraps, whatever you prefer. And I can cut this tip off. Then we want to kind of turn these into more of a collar, kind of a wet fly look. So I can stroke everything back. Make sure my thread is nice and tight. And then I'm going to wrap a little bit backwards, trapping all those fibers so that they're swept backwards. Now, almost to the end, I'm going to grab two of these white pieces of uh, Goose by Ott. And I'm going to cross them. And these are going to become my wing, or the horns as they call them. And um, I'm going to put these, unlike on the first tail, I'm going to have the curvature going in the same direction. So when these are together, you can see that they're both curving in the same direction. Cross those, make sure they're the same length. And right at their widest point, right by my fingernail, is where I'm going to tie those in. I'm going to lay that right on top of the hook, make sure that all my measurement is right. And then with my left hand, I'm going to come in and pinch that straight down. And then with my thread, I can come in. about three wraps, take my hand off, make sure the length is good, if they're cocked to one side or the other, I can just tweak it just a little bit, and make sure I got that tied in nicely. And then all I have to do is clip these off, I can clip them off at the same time, but what I like to do is come in with my scissors, do one at a time, come in with your fingertip, kind of bend that back. That's going to enable you to go in there really tight. Just want to clip this as tight as you can to the hook. Come in with the second one. At this point, my thread, I'm just going to clean up those white butts of the biot. You don't want to come back too far with your thread wraps. I think ideally, this little thread collar should not be much wider then the eye of your hook. Wouldn't hurt to put a little drop of head cement right there, make it uh, a little bit more durable. Check your proportions. Make sure your tail is coming off on the sides. 
your wing is on top and that is well, beadhead print snip.